Trick or treat for UNICEF, it's Cyber Must Have Seen TV, the podcast dedicated to the sitcoms of the 20th century from Lassie to Frasier. I am your TV guy, Brett White, also known as the drag queen, Barb Hardly, and also editor-in-chief of Pop Heist, which we can talk about, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and say hello to the Timmy to my Lassie, Ethan K. Bark, bark, says Lassie. And uh, gotta put the paw up. That's gotta his... put the paw up. I'm putting the paw up. You can watch it on YouTube. <laughs> Um, we watched a Lassie episode and Lassie 90% of the time just barked, sat on her back legs and lifted well, her paw up. That is Lassie doesn't talk. Lassie's a real dog. Lassie is a real dog. Lassie is a real dog. Not a CGI dog. Um, Lassie was multiple dogs, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for like, uh, 50 years, but yes, I, I, I want to, uh, <laughs> I guess mark the uh, occasion of must have seen TV has now outlasted my tenure at Decider <laughs> because I literally got hired at Decider like right before recording the very first episode. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, really. you are no longer so a senior reporter for right. Decider.com. <laughs> you have bigger plans uh, yeah and i am have made myself editor-in-chief i didn't know no one promoted me except myself of a new endeavor that i don't know when it's gonna actually go live but i'm gonna start talking about it now because i want i get some word out i don't know what's going on <laughs> i completely quit my job in order to do uh a new hopefully a uh hopefully a pop culture website that will fix all the problems of the industry oh that's <laughs> lofty um <laughs> but you've invited some really talented people to help write with you myself included yes um, really yeah and people. my husband is working on the branding and the website and or the logos and stuff and yeah uh, and matt, i'm yeah matt little from matt and brett like co love comics we've talked uh, is Got involved in. my wife yeah, it's it's say. gonna be fun yeah megan it, yeah, it, it's it's so yeah. Like the 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 goal eventually is that any writer can write about anything they want to at my website. At my house, everyone can play with all the toys. Um, because <laughs> what is broken about online journalism right now is that corporations have gutted all of them. Uh, newsrooms across the country are dead. Um, that is one of the things that I hate most about the current world we live in. Uh, is that when I go deep diving in newspaper archives and I go and find celebrity interviews from like the 50s and 60s and 70s, like you realize like, oh yeah, no, every city all across America had a TV reporter who once a year might get flown to Hawaii to talk to the I Dream of Genie cast or, you know, go to Canada to talk to like, and that local part, the fact that you could live anywhere in the country and be so involved in popular culture uh, is just something that we just don't have anymore. And that sucks because it's all for the rich people and it's all for clicks. Yeah. So hey, no I, clicks. I read the book Spinning Disney's World by Charles Ridgway. Uh, Charles Ridgway was the head of publicity for Disneyland. So it was all about these junkets and invites and oh. getting people on site and, <laughs> and, and having these events for these local reporters who are like, I don't know what a Walt Disney world is, but <laughs> you sent me, brought me down here. And now I'm going to look at the Walt Disney world you have here. And it's, oh. it's, I, I really liked it because it really gave me that insight into what local reporting was like. I never, I would like, I part. would love it. Like when I think about like, I would love to be able to do what I do now in any other era. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe not like the 1800s. Um, yeah, I would love to do pharmaceutical advertising in the 1800s because oh, A, man. there were no regulations and B, it was all heroin. <laughs> Just a Coca-Cola as heroin. Cocaine. Wait, did Coke have heroin in it originally? No, it didn't. No, it okay. didn't. It had, it had cocaine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So keep an eye out. I, you know, the website is not up yet. I'm still in the very, 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 very early stages. I do really would like to have it up by the holiday season because that would help in terms of getting the word out. Um, but we'll, these things take time. We'll these see. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, that'll be the new home for must have seen TV content too. So, cause it's, it's part of the network, baby. Um, part of the network. 
But we do have a Patreon that we do want to plug. Yes. Um, we did have to turn it off for a little while because... Because of uh, because I was uh, in, in separation negotiations with my uh, employer uh, of just figuring out the right um, severance, not severance, but, you know, just I am quitting. Yeah, and there's also there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot of like. Uh, uh, Catch <laughs> Brett at the bar and Brett. Yeah, will there's just story. but. But just getting a whole lot of red tape between like insurance companies, uh, psychiatrist offices, and HR is just a really fun way to spend a summer. The same summer that your dad died. Really great. Really great. Now we're back. Patreon is up and running. And I am freed, baby. I'm freed. I already know some of the content that's going to be going up after this Lassie episode. Um, but we'll get to that uh, hopefully a little Ooh. bit later. And if you're on the Patreon, you'll see it. Ooh, but this week we will be traveling to and beginning our Halloween content, bleh, uh, to bleh. October 25th, 1959. What? I don't, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Pillow Talk rolled the box office. Mac the Knife by Bobby Darren topped the charts on CBS aired the last episode, The UNICEF Story. Ethan, you must have seen The UNICEF Story before today. Well, this is interesting. I have not seen the UNICEF story before today. And mo a lot of Lassie fans probably also didn't see right. the UNICEF story because it was not syndicated with the rest of them. Why is that? Uh, I, my suspicion was it was a seasonal thing that was mm. created in partnership with UNICEF. The script no, this is written, a UNICEF commercial. <laughs> it's a it's a 21 minute UNICEF commercial that was written for a very specific time, and for some reason, and I I don't know all the backroom discussions, as part of the syndication package, season six episode eight was not part of that package. Now it is available on YouTube. I believe it is available Thanks. on. Some, Thank you, Kali Kali Lover, for uploading it. <laughs> I love um, that. So you can watch it. And I honestly, I thought it was, there's, there's nothing in it. That's like, would not be out of the ordinary for any usual Lassie episode. No. Yeah. So I grew up watching Lassie bitch. Like you said, you, this is the first Lassie episode you've seen. Maybe oh, yeah. I've seen hundreds. <laughs> Probably not the UNICEF story. No, not the UNICEF one. But I mean, so this is one of the few shows that ran on Nickelodeon, not on Nick at night. It ran mm. in like the afternoons. Um, this and I think Dennis the Menace also aired during the day. Uh, but when when that oh god that the theme song man, there's like vivid sense memories associated with like the opening and closing credits of this show because it's like that wistful like whistling like. And then just Timmy screaming or screaming, shouting, Lassie! And then Lassie running, running home. Starring June Lockhart. <laughs> then some other guy who was in it for five seconds. Um, uh, Hugh, what's his name? Uh, Hugh Ryan? Uh, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh Laurie. Something. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Riley. Hugh Riley, yeah. Kind of. And yeah. John Provost as Timmy. As Timmy. And now, like, course, I mean, I was deep laughing. into it. Like, I even remember because, you know, once they would hit, they didn't run the entire, like, I don't know what chunks were sold in syndication. Like, I've never seen any of the Ranger years, nor have I seen any of the Kung Fu years, as you called it, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> or it's just Lassie thing, traveling. Yeah, it lasted 17 seasons, 18, 19 if you count the animated series. Lassie Rescue Rangers. Um, it lasted uh, 591 episodes. So when you say, I've seen hundreds of the episodes, you Probably. might not have even seen half of them. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I've only seen... So, like, there would be, there'd be a point in Nickelodeon, whatever chunk they had, they would hit the end, and it would still be June Lockhart, John Provost era. Yeah. And then it would cycle back around to Jeff Scully. Yes, it the started out first three seasons with Jeff. I didn't like Jeff. So the first three seasons were uh, the Claytons, uh, Jan Clayton, uh, George Cleveland, and uh, Tommy Reddig as the, as the Millers. Gramps, 
and recently widowed Ellen and little Jeff. They get three seasons with Lassie. Then fourth season. Um, oh, like sorry. Timmy comes on or like in season three, right? Because like, there is like a little bit of. Yeah. So, so because Timmy, he's an orphan. Timmy's an orphan played by John <laughs> Provost who gets, who just kind of hooks up with the Miller family. And then the Miller family is like, we have to go. We're going to leave you here with another family, Timmy. But, and that's which is the, weirder, the family leaving Timmy or the family leaving their dog. <laughs> like, why do they leave Lassie? Both are weird. So we get uh, half. A Michael season. Eisner wants to make it very clear he thinks it is weirder to leave the child. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't value pets more than people. For season four, halfway through. Because we have actually Cloris Leachman as yeah, that's crazy. As Ruth Martin and Timmy's there, and Lassie's there, and um, Paul Martin, uh, played by John Shepard. They leave after the fourth season. Seasons five through ten is the classic June Lockhart, Hugh yeah. Riley, John Provost Trinity. <clears throat> Season ten, Timmy says he's fourteen years old, and in a very mature decision, he just says. I don't want to do this show anymore. And everyone's like, you can leave. And June Lockhart and Hugh Riley are like, we will also leave. And well, then because June get... Lockhart saw that spaceship about to take off. And she's like, baby, I got to get lost. In space. I got to get lost in space. Uh, <laughs> season 11 through 16. Lassie is a forest ranger, goes with a forest ranger. Um, then season 17, which is the last CBS season, Lassie is on her own and just travels the world like Kane and Kung Fu. She just <laughs> wanders the world, um, helping out other animals. Sometimes there are no humans at all. <laughs> and then the series goes into is just straight syndication seasons 18 and 19. So yeah, in addition to the, um, the animated series, there's 18 and 19 where she's on a ranch with the Holdens and that's, and that's 19 seasons, 591 episodes, multiple casts, 1954 to 1973. And it was a hit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, Lassie is one of those touchstones that, I mean, I guess Gen Z has no idea what Lassie is, but like my generation, millennials, absolutely. Even if you've never seen a Lassie episode, you know, Timmy's stuck in the well. And he was never stuck in a well. Yeah. He never fell down the well. He fell down everything else. And to the point where John Provost's book was Timmy's in the well, because it was the joke, because he never actually did fall in a well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, yeah, like I grew up watching Lassie. Uh, very visceral uh, memories coming back to me watching this. But let's go on and jump right in. This week on Must Have Seen TV, we'll be talking about the Lassie episode, The UNICEF Story. It is the eighth episode of season six. It was written by Ruth Church and Miriam Geiger and directed by Norman Morgan. Here's how IMDb describes the episode. A foreign exchange student's conf confession of stealing from Timmy's classmates become... Okay, I botched that. A foreign exchange student's confession of stealing from Timmy's classmates because of her family's hunger inspires the class to help Ruth in her task as a coordinator for UNICEF. That is a lot of information. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. yeah. Completely accurate. Yeah, that's about it. And it only takes 21 minutes to tell this entire story. There's not a lot of padding. <laughs> no. I The way it starts is very scary for the Halloween episode. Oh yeah. For the Halloween episode most definitely it's it's this this uh well first of all you have the intro yeah. with the whistle song. Do, 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 do. It's so nostalgic, wistful, painful like it's a it doesn't make for me. It does not make me feel good. It makes me feel like time is slipping away. <laughs> <laughs> like our life together, we must live very, it while we can. Like it's very, yeah. Well, there, there's, there is some controversy over who wrote it, but most people say that it was Les Baxter. Ooh. Les Baxter 
if you are if you, if the name doesn't ring a bell, he is the number one name in exotica music. Oh, so the, the kind of stuff you hear at tiki bars. Oh, um, in like the Polynesian at uh at at Walt Disney World, it is that kind of um, it's very well orchestrated, but it kind of it evokes these these kind of like um jungle uh yeah. scenarios or south seas scenarios and uh it's very atmospheric so less baxter we it is true that a lot of his that he did a lot of the soundtrack music throughout and you can tell like it's very overblown in yeah. in places but it's he is also the name that is associated with this whistle famous whistle intro is he the one whistling no, the person who was whistling, uh, I can actually look this up. It was Muzzy Marcelino. Okay. Yeah, Good Muzzy Marcelino. I had it but, up. I had it up on my on my laptop, so I could just look up Muzzy Marcelino. Good for Muzzy. Him. The episode starts with a girl running through the woods, screaming and crying hysterically. The UNICEF story. The UNICEF story. It's Lassie, y'all. I mean, she's running. She's falling down. Lassie hears and jumps out the window because Lassie has got to go save that day. This is the most that Lassie does in the entire episode. Yeah, Lassie uh, is basically... Res- so wait, what is the little girl? Anne is the girl's name. Anne. Anna. Anna. So how... Do you know how old the actress was? That's a good and question. Was she I- the same age as John Provost? Because she looks like she is a full foot taller than him. Uh, I don't know if he was just tiny for his age or she was born in 1947 and uh, John Provost was born in 1950. So she was three years three older, years older and, than him. And they're in the and same is, grade and same grade. She is a foot taller than he yeah. is. And he, and he refers to her as little girl, little girl. I love that. I love So yeah, like Lassie brings a like, so yeah, this is a, a little girl. She does not speak English well. Lassie, like, she's an... I love this part. I love... She's initially scared of Lassie. But then Lassie, yeah. like, puts a paw out, like, shake, and then it starts whimpering and, like, almost, like, empathizing and, like, cuddles up with her. <laughs> I love you, Lassie. <laughs> and then takes her by the hand with her mouth. It, it's hard to It's hard to use pronouns with Lassie. Because Lassie was played by a, a a male dog, but they just it was assigned female at script. Oh, Lassie's drag, honey. <laughs> um, the original queen. Yeah, the I mean the original dog from the uh, the movies was named Pal, and and but then all the other Lassies were descendants of Pal. So this is uh, in this season, season six, it's Lassie Junior. Oh, it's only one generation removed? Yeah. Okay. Um, There's yeah, all like, kinds of stuff I can talk about, Lassie. But, like, yes, Lassie kind of drags her by the... Takes her by the hand to where Timmy is. Yeah, and also what I noticed... Um, like, the outside set... And this might be true throughout the entire episode... Has wind. I Like, which is a thing that usually when people go outside on obviously a set it just doesn't and there's actually like it feels like a scary night yeah it it makes me think of the danny thomas show where they were outside and it's like oh this is obviously a set (laughs) oh yeah no this is just like hey we're putting on a show uh this is outside cool yeah (laughs) he is also the the welcome committee for this person mom and dad don't leave the house timmy no Timmy okay. walks up because Lassie comes back. Like Timmy wakes up and is like, "Where is my dog?" And then he like comes outside as Lassie's bringing Anna up, and he says like, "Hello, little girl." Something like, "How are you, little girl?" Like it's like she <laughs> is tall. He's nine years old when he's. He doing- also gives me so much big Luke Skywalker and New Hope energy. Oh, truly. Like the like 
Luke Skywalker on Tatooine, where he's just like a doofus, <laughs> and is kind of like like his uh his like tunic is too big, kind of, and he's always like, oh, <laughs> like he's... the way that Timmy walks up and is like, hello, little girl, come with me. He <laughs> he's like Luke Skywalker in that he lives on a farm, and he assumes the best dead. out of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and so he brings her Anna Anne into the kitchen. Yes. Uh Lassie is like one of the first shows. I'm trying to think. When I think of rotary telephones, I think I think of Lassie. I think that is my touch point. Well, the dad gets it in his head that this girl who doesn't speak English very well is quote, that little foreign girl, the William the Wilkins Williams. The Wilkins came uh, back with. Yeah, the Wilkins were going to bring home. And, and this so is... let's get, do we need to unpack what the fuck is going on with Okay, Anna? this is, this is a post-war thing. This is World War II was 10 plus years ago. This yeah, is like a 14, child that, yeah. that they brought over from. Is she like. Eastern European. If, okay, at first when they said Europe, I was like, she sounded kind of Italian. But then, like, when she started talking at the end, I was like, no, that's definitely, like... Polish. Russian, Polish, Croatian. Yeah. Like, it's definitely, yeah. She has... She, later, she alludes that her family is still over there, but this is an opportunity. The Williams... Wilkins? Williams? Wilkins. Sorry, Wilkins. They had the opportunity to bring her over and have her live with, live with them. She immediately had bolted and got yeah. lost in the storm. And then she keeps stealing everyone's... It, She's yeah. incredible. She's eating like she's eating crackers. She gets a slice of chocolate cake. She just wants to eat crackers. And she's, Timmy's like, she's eating like she's starving. And then mom's like, shut up. She's right here. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it is wild that no one. Because my immediate thought is, why the hell these people brought her home? Why aren't they feeding her is my initial. And it like no one throughout the episode talks like that or like if Anne is yeah. stealing food why like my natural assumption would be why aren't her parents like why aren't her caretakers giving her food we find out later that it is actually like a more complex reason than that yeah. but like the fact that no one jumps to uh hey so she's over here starving oh uh, what's going on yeah. wilkins come on wilkins yeah. um so there is the the transition is she probably goes back to the Wilkinses, but she comes back for a picnic with picnic. Timmy and Lassie. Yeah. Just a, the, the day is now a nice day. They're kind of going back through the woods and uh, picnics are great, says Timmy, because your mom makes sandwiches. Maybe not for everybody, Timmy. Yeah, maybe not in Croatia. <laughs> My note is Lassie is there. Lassie's sitting. Most of my notes are Lassie is there. Lassie does not contribute other than no. This is not Anna. a good. It's not a good. Good. Not a good outing for Lassie. But good girl. Good girl. Good boy. Um, Timmy falls asleep. <laughs> wait, he does. Yeah, Timmy falls asleep. Anna leaves. Timmy wakes up. Lassie goes. Um, oh right! Like, yeah, go, yeah, go yeah. Go find her. Go find her, girl. Um, he's wearing like a straw hat too. Yeah, it's a straw hat that's way too large for his time. Timmy of... all Timmy also looks like a mix of like Jake Lloyd and Mark Hamill. Now that I'm looking at him, like it's kind of it's kind of creepy in a way. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I gotta say, John Provost as just as like a person and an actor, everything worked out for this guy. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He starts, he starts acting at three years old. He gets on Lassie. Um, he's nine years old when this is when this airs at 14. Like I said, he just like, I don't want to do this anymore. He does a couple roles as a teenager. He was in computer wore tennis shoes oh, um, yeah. with Kurt, uh, Kurt Russell. And then he's just like, I want to go to college. I don't want to do Hollywood anymore. And he goes to college and it does. He does very well in college and he becomes a real estate agent. Uh, later in life, he, he, he does the convention circuit. He writes some books and things are good for him. He's actually married to, um, 
Laurie Jacobson, who writes a lot of books about Hollywood. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And he's still out alive. Him, yeah. him and June Lockhart, both still alive. And the teacher was alive. She passed away in April. Mm. Uh, once we get to talking about wow. her. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Think, so I Timmy goes and looks for Anne and he finds her and he's like, why did you run away? And she was like, April fools. Like it's, it's they not, it's joke. fun. Cause she's, she, they, he finds her kind of crowded over by a log. Oh, now I know why she was at the fucking log, man. She was at the log. Because she because was put food in there. She's hiding food. You think that she um, stole stuff from the picnic basket? From the picnic basket? Oh my God. I hit it in the log. I, for it, says, man, this is, that's crazy because this is before TV was ever rerun. So the fact that they actually did something like that. Oh man, I'm, that makes me excited. Okay. That like you see her at that log. And you don't find out why until later. And then when are you ever going to be able to use that knowledge? <laughs> this episode is going to rerun. <laughs> so the, she says it's, I played a joke like April fools and he, and Timmy's like, it's October. Bitch. Yeah, and, then, a... <laughs> and then he does the weirdest thing. He's like, you know what you do in October? You do trick or treat. And she's like, yeah. what's that? And he goes around random, a random, a random ass rock and pulls out a full on Frankenstein mask. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is my stash. You stash in food. I'm stashing masks. And and Timmy himself is only like two and a half feet tall. So this mask is like half. His oh, it's body. like down to his waist. And yeah. <laughs> And she and she's not scared of it. She thinks it's funny, but um, he, start, he starts like stomping around and stuff. Yeah. Like Timmy's a good kid. It cracked me up because like later in the episode when they are going trick or treating, he's not wearing the mask. Yeah, no that that's his. That's his. Why does Timmy have a mask in the woods? That's his feelings mask. Or it's like that's like he's like this is where I chase people down. They can't yeah. tell who I am. When I go peeping, I have to wear this mask. <laughs> Otherwise uh, they won't be pleased with me. So then the next day we are at school and the entire class is singing America, the beautiful. Uh, is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. They sing America, the beautiful. They're all the same song. <laughs> uh, the teacher is Miss Hazlitt played by Carla Balanda. Did um, you, is this, does that ring true for you, standing up and just singing patriotic songs in elementary school? I grew up in the 80s in the Cold War, and yes, we did sing we did America too. Beautiful. Okay. I didn't know, because I also uh, was like, this could be a very, like, Southern thing of, like, we gotta sing a medley of America's greatest anthems. No, we, we did the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we would do America the Beautiful, at least, I want to say, up until maybe first grade. Yeah. So. It is weird. It's a lot of like random singing in classes. I don't know what that was about. Um, yeah, but no, she's like everyone's singing, but she notices that one desk is empty. Empty. Carla Belenda uh, was um, <laughs> she was invited to Hollywood by Hallie Howard Hughes um, when he saw her uh, uh, in drama school and uh, they dated for a little while. Wait, hold on. The school teacher? Yeah, the school teacher dated Howard Hughes. That dated Howard Hughes, and then um, she uh, she left acting in nineteen sixty five, and uh, became just an active in, uh, volunteer work. But she just passed away uh, uh -huh. in April. Just passed away. Yeah, I've been so like June Lockhart and Hayden Rourke did a lot of. Um... Oh, they did a lot of theater together, both, I think, in the 40s and the 70s. And I have a photo of them together. And I was trying to get in touch with her. And I I didn't I didn't have luck. Um, I I think I like found one of her. My the way I do this is like find their closest living relative. And so I think I found maybe her granddaughter or something um, on like LinkedIn or I don't know. That. She's 99 yeah, so did, years old. So yeah. So like that, that's where not. I'm like, kind of like now, like, I oh, mean, like it's, you're really rolling the dice on how much that yeah. memory. She's, I mean, she was active in the fan community for a long time, both in Lassie fan fandom and lost in space fandom. Yeah. Oh, and she was in, I mean, she was in 
holiday in handcuffs in 2006 or whatever yeah, and and she <laughs> like did she, was in when when the new lassie came around she she did an appearance in in new lassie and uh, she played I, no oh no okay For, i was trying junction? to think if she was in the brady bunch movies but i don't think she was she was in petticoat junction she was i believe a doctor in that oh right yeah after the lead dies she, i think she becomes the lead yeah june lockhart just like a staple of classic television um yeah uh so yeah like then we cut outside and Anne is running in she's late lassie is following her um because lassie's a good dog and lassie's allowed in school for reasons that are not explained he's lassie L that dog has probably saved every one of those kids life by this point <laughs> season six they're like this dog sits in that chair <laughs> this, <laughs> this dog, dog gets this an dog a this dog pulls a salary from the <laughs> town. Honestly, like, yeah, the dog is the SRO officer. Lassie is the school's. <laughs> uh, a little bit of fun information about one of the students, um, Willie Brewster. Uh, she has a couple lines and she plays piano at the end. Uh, mm. Willie Brewster is played by Linda Rather. Linda Rather is the daughter of Jack Rather and um, uh, Bonita Rather. Who bought the rights to Lassie and uh, Lone Ranger? So they had a lot of money, and they built the Disneyland Hotel. Oh, so, and operated <laughs> it up very until very, until Disney <clears throat> took it over from them. Jack Rather was a big fan of um, was a big fan of they were friends with with Disney's, so they traveled socially. And Jack's like. Hey, I'd like to build a hotel. And Disney's like, I'd like you to build a hotel. We need a hotel. And it's it, Lassie is just the story of things working out for everybody. It's like it worked out great. <laughs> that um, sounds good. Nice. <laughs> but it got his um uh the narrator for Lassie was also Bonita Rather, Jack's wife. Oh. And so they got their daughter involved playing one of the students. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, who's another student who's a little shit. Rudy. Rudy. Rudy, yeah. They're Rudy. all eating lunch outside, and then a little snot. He's basically like, you know, if you watch Full House, he's the Aaron of Lassie. God, I just don't like this kid. Um, someone stole he, my orange and chocolate bar. Yeah, he's like, again, someone stole my lunch again. He goes inside, and he's like, someone stole my orange and chocolate bar. I can't think of, I don't know, that's an acidic lunch. <laughs> the heartburn special yeah like also just not good together uh he, he accuses anna or whatever her name is yeah um they and then uh then they fight Tindy yeah so what Rudy. i i think i loved this scene in a weird way <laughs> so basically like after the teacher's like no you don't know that like the teacher's does a good job of being like just mm, i'll i'll figure it out just don't don't be a yeah racist dick little kid um but then he goes outside and he starts like does he like goes up to timmy he's like hey your friend over there is stealing everybody's lunches yeah yeah and timmy's like no she wouldn't do that he's like yeah she's different from all of us she, she can't even talk or like like real aggressive and then timmy like slugs the guy um yeah they go at it <clears throat> now this is where i so i have a theory i have like a working theory kind of thing of like if if this aired right now you know a hundred percent right wingers would be like lassie gone woke lassie went <laughs> woke oh god like something <laughs> like before 2015 I honestly think that like people could point out racism and sexism and everyone would kind of agree like, yeah, that is shitty. Or like, yeah, yeah, that th this TV show doing this storyline. It's, it's like when you think like how many people were angry that the Planeteers were all from different cultures. Why are why did this, why is that to be a black guy and a South American on my Planeteers or like GI Joe? Why does this episode only have Scarlet and Lady J in it? Like that that talk 
didn't, I don't think it really existed. I think no, it definitely I... existed in like seedy underbelly shit. But I think in terms of just like popular mindset, we're like, yeah, black people exist. People from Croatia exist. Women exist. Whatever. I think it's because, and this is my own, you know, I don't, I don't study this kind of thing. It's because there's an audience that gives those people attention. Yeah. And they say, and it's, it's people who think the same way that they do and say, yeah, why isn't the, the only character here a white cis male? Yeah. And there's, and th as soon th as that gets picked up by other people who just want to complain about these kinds of things, then it becomes a movement. And that's like, so it is like refreshing in a way just to be like, Here's Lassie in 1959 telling a story about like, hey, maybe it isn't cool to just like immediately blame the immigrant for stealing all of your food. <laughs> Although and, spoilers, she does steal well, all she their does, food. But she has a reason. <laughs> but but I mean, like it, it, it is like it's and also the way that all the adults are very um, understanding and kind about the situation is also a good thing. It it it, it just uh, frustrates me because it, it kind of to me proves that all of right wing bullshit is an act, is artificial, and is only being like pumped up and shit because of YouTube views and like getting money from advertisers on their like hate podcasts. Like anyway. When people say they want to go back to, they look at the 1950s as this great time in America. <laughs> this is not the stuff that they're looking at. No, they're not. They're, they're not, not looking at. Okay, this was post war. There were a lot of people in Eastern Europe that were really laboring under communism, that or needed, you know, were really fucked help. up. We took them really, in. Yeah, that that was the right thing to do, and that's what that's the whole point of this episode is. Look to people who are other than you and outside of your circumstances, show them sympathy and empathy and take steps in this case through collecting money for UNICEF to yeah. alleviate some of their hardship. Why Especially can't we get, Halloween. why can't we get behind that? Like that sounds, Fine. it's just empathetic. That's well, all it is. Also later on, Rudy's like, fuck that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, like the teacher Rudy's addresses everyone like, Hey, who's stealing the food? You can come up. You won't get in trouble. Like we'll just. And that doesn't. Lassie does nothing. Lassie stands up for no reason. It's like <laughs> okay, Lassie's also here. Lassie does nothing. Lassie does nothing. Lassie, yeah, episode. well, Lassie puts that paw up, baby. That's the that's like the Fonzie hitting the jukebox. Is Lassie going like, boom? The scene's uh, over. <laughs> UNICEF comes into the school. The, well, uh, then we get the uh, UNICEF commercial, which is the teacher and June Lockhart on the couch and her just going over like, here is my big universe kit that just universe UNICEF kit that just <laughs> came. You see how it has all of these <laughs> accoutrements hands, hands. hands. <laughs> literature. Hands and and then literature. that's where um, then Anne and Ms. Hazlitt have a talk about Anne or Ruth and Miss Hazlitt have a talk. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the Ruth, they talk about Anna, Anna probably hasn't seen this much food before. Mm -hmm. Um, but Ruth is going to leave it. Let, let's let Miss Hazlitt take care of this. When has Miss Hazlitt says like, I haven't brought it up directly to Anne or the Wilkinses because she didn't want to embarrass them, which is like a night, like, which is a level of like consideration that is thoughtful, but but also, if I was Miss Hazlitt, my immediate thought is like, why the fuck aren't the Wilkinses feeding this child? I have got to go talk to them right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Like that one. laughs> she, she has enough wherewithal to go over to, to Ruth's house, go over to Timmy's house, sit down with Ruth for, you know, a while. Why doesn't she go over to the Wilkins house? Yeah. And be like, what's going on? That pantry's stocked. Yeah, or if the Wilkins need help, then... She then maybe the Wilkins totally, aren't the ones that should be taking in refugees. She hasn't totally sussed out that it's Anna yet, but she yeah. is pretty sure that it's <clears throat> Anna. And Timmy now is under suspicion that his his bestie. Is, Mom uh, goes to school to sell UNICEF to the kids. Uh, she's like, "Who's trick or treating?" And this was kind of surprising. 1959, everyone yeah. was trick or treating. We like we had talked about. I know we had talked about this previously as. Halloween was still kind of a new 
social wave. Uh, but 1959, everybody's trick-or-treating. Um, Mom also talks really, really slow. Yeah, like, really. I that was a June Lockhart thing or a character thing. But Kids are stupid, especially when you're trying to explain. So, like, <laughs> she says... From what I understood about the UNICEF thing is like you go, you say trick or treat, then you get your candy or whatever. And then you also have an additional like envelope or something for a, a penny. Yeah. For a, a can for like a, a penny that, hey, can I also get a penny for UNICEF? And then when when Rudy's like, fuck this, I'm not giving up all my candy. Like, and it's like, I don't think she said that, Rudy. I think she said you're just getting the, the, the penny. Well, I, I I hate to throw this out there, but in the 1950s and 60s, some kids were told you can do one or the other. That you can seems... trick or treat for candy or you could trick or treat for UNICEF. And some oh. schools cannot pick up candy if you're trick or treating for UNICEF. You should. I, I saw this on a, a Lassie uh, website where they're doing a little commentary and he's like, these kids are lucky that they can do both. I was only allowed to do treat or treat for you. Oh my God. Wait, what Lassie website? Oh, I, I would, it would take me forever to find it. <laughs> Is this like, a website that we need to partner with? <laughs> it, it hasn't been updated in a while, but uh, <laughs> that's why I was looking for more less Baxter content. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, oh, so, so is it only one penny per their entire night of trick or treating or do they no, have multiple no. cans or whatever? No, it's 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 you go up you and then it's every house. Like, yeah, every house you ask and at this time a penny was worth more. When I collected for 4H, it was whatever you wanted to give. If you wanted to stick a dollar in there or a quarter, you totally could. Because at this time, as they pointed out, one penny equals five glasses of milk. Hey, really? I'm looking up the inflation calculator right now to see if that'll work. <laughs> Um, one penny equals five why glasses. Why couldn't they go like, okay, this house is a UNICEF house, this house is a candy house? Like, it feels like you could do both. Okay. You, I mean, there was nothing. A, a to penny say, in 1959 but... is 11 cents today. Yeah. <laughs> so if someone gives a quarter, that's yeah. 250. Weird. So, yeah. Uh, I did it when I, for one year, we were collecting for Kenya. Mm. Uh, when I was in 4-H, there were my 4-H group was I want to say four people, three of whom went trick or treating for UNICEF as a group, and it really was, it was as easy as trick or treat. Here's your candy. Trick or treat for UNICEF, and some and it has it has a coin slot, so it's not like you're like holding up like a box or something, or like a Campbell like a, soup can. Yeah, it's like you. It's it has the coin slot. You know, a coin goes in there. Yeah, and we I, I thought it was great. We um. We raised enough to get uh, one of these towns that was suffering from famine uh, a water pump, mm. which is important. And I think the way that we did that was the mother of one of the 4-H kids was a professor at Lafayette College. So she had an in to a dorm trick or treat. So we'd go door to door at the dorm for candy, but also we could do we can hit more houses with with UNICEF. Uh, college so. students giving <laughs> yeah well you know you Ooh. organize it correctly and it happens yeah it's it just not uh uh yeah so then they go outside um and uh, anna's forgotten her coat and so She's she like goes back and forgotten her, her coat. coat yeah she goes back inside and then shot like it's a alfred H hitchcock episode or something <laughs> it is so moody like i feel like there are blinds that like you know, shadow across her face as she goes and gets her coat and then she goes to a lunchbox, grabs a sandwich and then like, is that when she like hightails it to like her yeah. log? Yeah, she she goes to steal, she steals the food, she runs the log. The, you know, the less Baxter. Doo, 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 yeah, yeah, doo, it's, like, it's cinematic. It's, it's, you know, it's Alfred Hitchcock Presents. It is. Yeah. It, and then like, uh, yeah. And then, what Timmy and uh, Miss Hazel Hazlitt uh, find her, or like they follow her and see that she's squirreled away a, just a bunch of food in a log. Lassie is there. Lassie is there. Lassie's always there. I have a big note. Why is Lassie at school? <laughs> what else is Lassie going to do? <laughs> I mean, this is taking Mary Had a Little Lamb 
to like an extreme. Like the dog <laughs> is always at school with Timmy. It's, it, it's the dog's show. Dog is top billing. Uh, and that's when like Anna is man, Anna or Anna. I do this every Anna. week where I cannot remember someone's name. Well, it's wrong <laughs> in my brain. Um, but he, this Anna. House is like if you explain what is going on, like the other kids like will be like they don't hate you. They will be your friend, et cetera. Yeah. And she cops to it. She says she she tells her story. She doesn't say where she's from. She says she's from a faraway country to keep it kind of ambiguous. But she says, I, I you have so much. Um, I have a family of seven brothers and two sisters and I want to bring food back to my family. Um, so sometimes she goes hungry so she can save more food for her family. Yeah. To mail Which it is, back, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that Timmy's mom shows up. Just, I don't know why. She just does. She um, pokes her head in the window and was like, y'all want a trick or treat for UNICEF now? And now Rudy, the little shit's like, I do want UNICEF now. More than ever. Not in those words, but he's like, yeah, we should all trick or treat. And now, like the entire class, and Lassie barks, and the entire class wants to do UNICEF. Yeah. Um, and then we get a really quickly tacked on trick or treat scene where Timmy, yeah. not wearing the Frankenstein mask, and is dressed as a poor person or a hobo or which is this in <laughs> feels incredibly <laughs> toned down. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey, I, hey do I look familiar? <laughs> what? Anna, I'm going as your dad. Yeah, like, Jesus, Timmy. Anna is dressed. I don't know what she's dressed as. She's dressed a little in a nice, peep. I don't. A nice dress and a, like a, a nice hat. So, and I think that the piano girl's dressed like a Romani individual, maybe. Oh. Uh, who's that's know. that's uh yes, that is Linda Rather. <laughs> um. And then they sing, yeah, so we had a quick scene of them <laughs> trick-or-treating for UNICEF, where it's just them holding out the bag and then the can, and next they're inside, and um, Willie's playing the piano, and they sing the song, which is trick-or-treat, trick-or-treat, trick-or-treat for UNICEF, and then that repeats. And that's the end <clears> of the <throat> And we get the credits, and you, which is Lassie. Sitting there, credits are rolling over, and then right at the very end, you know what Lassie does? Paul up. Pa up. Paul's up. Good I gotta tell you, I, I want to go into the story of Lassie just a little bit, because yeah. Lassie has endured longer than most media. Lassie <laughs> yeah. was originally a, a 1938 short story by Eric Knight. Um, then he created a Lassie Come Home full novel. Huge. Um, became seven films uh, the first one starring Roddy McDowell and Elizabeth Taylor in Jeez. 1943. Um, June Lockhart herself was in Son of Lassie with Peter Lawford. Oh, come on. There's canon, um, right? Oh, no, that'd be weird continuity. This dog is the doctor. This dog is Doctor Who. It keeps regenerating. The dog gets its own radio show, so you can't even see the dog. The dog that gets seems... a radio show from 1947 to 1950. Um, 1970, it, it, then it gets the TV show. It runs 19 seasons, gets an animated series, then another series in 2020. It gets, uh, the new Lassie, I'm going to say in the 1990s, um, and a movie starring to the, in 2005, a movie starring 2005, Peter O'Toole, Gemma Redgrave. Kelly McDonald and Peter Dinklage. What that, was it released in theaters? It, it was, I believe, it was two thousand five. It might have been released, filmed in two thousand five. Might have been released in two thousand six. It gets a PlayStation Two game. Oh my god! <laughs> Lassie gets a goddamn PlayStation Two game, which I. <clears throat> I looked it up on YouTube, so you don't have to. It plays like a phone game. Oh. They, it's like you have to use Lassie to herd sheep into a corral. And then there's multiple things where Lassie is on something that is sliding down a hill. And you have to navigate her <laughs> left and right around different obstacles. So 
I think that so the Lassie movie is an Irish movie. Yeah, it takes it doesn't take place in the Yeah. US, it takes place overseas. And it uh it has a 93 on Rotten Tomatoes. And That's to this crazy. day, Lassie does Lassie does appearances, uh animal welfare things, conventions. Lassie will never die. It's just ongoing. Thank God. Uh, I have a fun little UNICEF trick or treat thing. Um, mm. Uh, let me uh, view actual size. So I was Googling around this week, uh, 1959. And it was just like Halloween. And then I was like, well, let me see if I can find any Halloween trick or treat candy scares. Because those are always fun to see. And, you know, they're Oh, always wow. around. And in my searching, I found an op-ed from the Corpus Christi Times by uh, columnist Phyllis Coffey. And the title, the headline was Halloween, Not Like It Was. And you know, I was like, this is going to be good. So this is 19, mind you, this is Halloween 1959. I'm going to read my selections from this article. Um, Halloween, Not Like It Was by Phyllis Coffey. Pigs in the courthouse, the inevitable topsy-turvy outhouse, and wall painting apparently have become but faded memories of Halloween. With few exceptions, today's young goblins spend October 31st parading in organized goody rings and attending school or church carnivals or all-night horror shows. <laughs> uh, ghosts just aren't the cads they used to be, one old-timer said. 40 years ago, Halloween wasn't complete unless we... hid each of the mayor's wagon wheels at a different spot in town and let out greased pigs and all the fussy women's prize petunias. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a woman in her early 50s recalls wingdings made of spools of thread, a nail, and twine. What a sound these inventions made against windows, she said. It's just wild hearing <laughs> senior citizens being like, oh man, vandalism. Uh, Things began to calm down about four years ago, a 19-year-old boy said. We actually began to do more prowling on other nights during the year because there weren't so many people watching. <laughs> <laughs> Police Chief R.T. Dick Runyon said that youngsters here have behaved themselves on Halloween for the past few years, and he asked for their continued cooperation. He urged homeowners, however, to prepare for Halloween Saturday as they would for a hurricane. Oh, my God. <laughs> Several local merchants said they have given up coating with glitter. Several local merchants said they have given up window coating with glycerin in the past several years. My windows aren't messed up to any extent anymore, one local merchant commented. It's hardly worth the trouble of repairing. <laughs> For the past three years, hundreds of youngsters from kindergarten to senior high school age have added the human touch to Halloween. They spend the first half of the evening in traditional trick-or-treat trips, but for funds to give to UNICEF, the United Nations Gency Fund? An emergency fund? I don't know. Yes, right? United, okay, Yeah. anyway. Um, then they return to their church headquarters for a party given by parents and teachers. UNICEF money... goes for medicines and milk to mothers and children in needy areas of the world. So Yes. I love that even in 1959, they were like, <laughs> it's gotten commercial. <laughs> no um, one's doing bloodletting ceremonies like they did 40 years ago. if you want to read a good book about this, um, I have one on my shelf called Death Makes a Holiday by David Skull. Uh, it is the history of It's the history of Halloween, but just as much celebrating Halloween. So Ooh. you get all those spooky pranks that were originally like, oh, we took the we took your gate and we threw it on your roof. Ha ha, sucker. And then moves into kind of like how it gets it's celebrated now. It's a very good book. I read it a couple of years ago. Wow. Uh, <laughs> are you ready for Nelson Must Have Facts about Lassie? Yeah. So on average, I could not find the ratings for this specific week because the 50s are just very hard to find ratings for. But 23.1 million average uh, watched Lassie episode by episode uh, to bring it in at number 29 for the TV season. So season six and it's still top 30. And it, You know. it typically won its time slot. But yeah, Um, and they, they started off that night. It was early. yeah, they won the time slot, except I believe when they went up against uh, Disney and Shirley Temple on, on two opposite networks, it kind of faltered a little bit, but I think they also changed the time on it. I Uh, could I'll be do wrong. it.
The top five shows of this season were number five, The Red Skelton Show. Number four, The Danny Thomas Show. Number three, Have Gum Will Travel. Number two, Wagon Train. And number one, Gunsmoke. So just Westerns and people yeah. with shows. <laughs> now, the CBS Sunday Night lineup is iconic. Oh. And I didn't know. I didn't. So your night starts off with Lassie. And you're like, can't get any better than this. And then there's Dennis the Menace. And you're like, wow, Ooh. the kids are getting fed tonight. And then it's <laughs> the Ed Sullivan show. And it's like, wow, the entire family is now enjoying cultural touchstones. And then yeah. there's General Electric Theater and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. So two half-hour anthology dramas. The parents are awake now, baby. Oh my God, that is a great night of television. And then you are there's not the kidding. George Gobel show. I don't know who George Gobel Oh, he was a comedian. Um, he was a. It was a. Oh, I recognize him. Yeah. yeah so then, comedian. it's his show. Then followed by "What's My Line," which "What's My Line" feels oh. like. You know, uh, I'm trying to. It feels like what Match Game was in the '70s. That is what that was in the. It was like adults, like probably smoking on TV, loosely Everybody's, playing a game. Everybody. So, yeah. What a nice night of television that was. And it starts off with Lassie. It starts off with something that the whole kids, even if mom and dad are like, this is a little silly for me, they might just like it because there's things that are moving on a television. Yeah. And, and you just turn it on. You maybe you keep it on. Dogs. Gala. Dogs. The dogs so what sit. Are you, what are you watching on ABC? We got Colt 45. When Colt tracks a killer. He discovers Cody's old buffalo gun, packs as Mina Wallop as his old stories. Mm. On CBS, we got Lassie. Uh, Timmy and the other children of Calverton learn a lesson in humility when little girl is caught stealing school lunches. And on NBC, Riverboat. Woman uses Riverboat Enterprises as means of escape after she has murdered her husband in self-defense. Whoa. Riverboat. I'm probably watching Riverboat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need that murder. Especially this close to Halloween. Lassie should have announced that it was a Halloween and UNICEF episode in these. Here's a question for you, because if if anyone who listened to the upfronts, this was a, a question. Do we do because Lassie did three episodes that are Halloween episodes. Do we do the UNICEF story or do we do another Halloween episode? What do you now that you've watched the episode? What is your take on? Is this an appropriate Halloween episode? Yeah, uh, so my criteria for, so I have very, very specific criteria for what I consider Halloween episodes. One, they have to, so they either have to take place at Halloween specifically, and then they can air any time of the year. If it airs in May, but it's set at Halloween, Halloween uh -huh. episode. If it is a spooky episode, like just an episode where there are ghosts or, you know, a Dracula or something, and it airs in October, that's a Halloween episode. But if it's like a ghost episode that airs in May, like that is not a Halloween episode. So this aired in October, and it also gets into a lot of lost and forgotten traditions of Halloween that I think are actually very educational. Um, this UNICEF thing I'd never heard of. Uh, and so I think that like, it is very much, it is definitely a Halloween episode. I would give it a three on a scale of one to five though, because like, yeah, it isn't like fun to watch. Well, it's, <laughs> I mean, not it's, fine. it's not scary. It's not spooky. It's mm -hmm. not monsters. And I'm particularly thinking Abbott and Costello, the haunted castle, yeah, which aired in February, but it is ghosts and creepy things and bats yeah, i and would that. not count it as a halloween episode but you wouldn't count it as a halloween because episode. it's just it's just it's just general it's just time of the year scary i would say that this focuses on another aspect of halloween which is the mechanics of trick-or-treating yeah and so i, I like would, uh, so i appreciate that i actually appreciated that i would give this probably if, if i was doing the one to five scale is this a halloween episode i'd probably give it a four maybe a five. Oh wow I would say that this is a Halloween episode because they're talking up, they're talking about Halloween, how what they're going to do. We see a Halloween party, we see them trick or treating. There's a mask that just shows up up from behind a rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, so on IMDb, twenty people rated this a six point six out of ten. Uh, what would you go higher or lower? Um, 
I might go a little higher. This was a, a lassie aside and the fact she did nothing. This was a good episode of TV. S Stop dragging lassie. <laughs> She's a good girl. <laughs> Other than dragging the girl to the, the farm, Lassie did nothing else. And that started off the entire episode. You don't get the you don't get the episode if that doesn't happen. She could have died of exposure out there yeah. had Lassie <laughs> not found her and dragged her to the barn. Well, so I, I would give it more. I'd give maybe a 6.8. I thought it was pretty good. OK, OK. Lassie, 6.8. We're starting starting our uh, rankings anew since we're in a new season. Uh, so Lassie, 6.8 for you. I mean, I would probably give this a 6. Okay. Solid. That's, I mean, that's, that, know. I would say, it's a solid D, but, you know, what are you going to do? I said solid D <laughs> Study on more, Lassie. Um, the must-see performance of the episode goes to... John Provost as Oh, Tibby. really? He had so many lines. Yeah, he's a little kid it's with a lot of lines. Years old. He's nine years old, and he's running these tables on this show. Uh, I'm giving it to Karen Dicker, who played Anna. Oh. Uh, who did not do much acting, but, well, no. she was an imitation of life. Um, That's wild. Uh, but she was great. I felt like she was great for, like, I was worried for her. Uh, she seemed very in peril. Uh, I just, I just, I liked her and I thought I wanted the best for her. I feel like we both chose people who did really, who had really good performances. Yeah. Not that Rudy. It's not like this, this wasn't one where we were like, oh, we have to do John Saxon because Ethan likes John Saxon. We have to do Charles Nelson Riley because yeah, or... we're Charles Nelson Riley. It's like, or I have to do the animal, like a, how I almost picked Salem, the real cat, last time. <laughs> I, 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 it's definitely not Lassie. Lassie did not have the must see performance. Oh, I would have liked up. something else. Yeah, there was a lot of sitting down, pause up. That's... And lastly, must other people see this episode at Halloween time? Oh, you put that twist at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think if we, if someone is like trying to manage their Halloween expectations, what are we doing? Then I would say yes. Oh, wow. This is a bold, it's a bold statement. I'm saying yes. So you know where trick or treat used to be. Yeah, this that's is, interesting. It's a time capsule. I mean, UNICEF is still around. They are still collecting. They're still doing trick or treat for UNICEF. It's, it's it all didn't... Bitcoin now. That... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bitcoin, a little crypto for the children for a glass of milk. <laughs> um, Have fun they... with your cryptos. So it is a way to say, hey, this is what life was like back then. It's not so much different than it is today collecting for UNICEF. So I I would say that overall, this was a great episode. Um, it was one that surprised me. I just wanted to like see what the UNICEF story was because mm. um, it, was, it, it, it didn't seem like, oh, the Halloween party. I think that was one of the episodes that they. Yeah. But this was this was about something other than ghosts and goblins, and it was about American Halloween in 1959, and I liked that. Yeah, I, I I love how sitcoms are a time capsule for our holiday traditions throughout the decades, and this is literally a book I want to write. Um, uh, but like so, like I, on that level, yeah, it's a good Halloween episode to watch. But I'm also like. You want to get spooky scary? I don't go to this. Like, you got to dull out your time. Oh. Like, if you want to go on an educational, historical, uh, fact finding mission, this is for you. But if you want to have your brain, uh, your brain <laughs> blasted out your ass, <laughs> where that came from, you got to watch Bewitched of Safe and Sane Halloween, baby, which we got to do a live watch along of. Uh, we got to do a live watch. That episode, that is, it's the Stevel of the 1960s. I want to say if you come over for Halloween for our movie marathon, stick around till the next day and we'll do it the next day. But on November 1st, well, I guess it's Day of the Dead. It's also my <laughs> wedding anniversary. Oh, Thank right. You very much. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Great. That is uh, another spooky episode uh, in the books. Um, and, uh, Ethan, where can people find you on the internet to talk about where they're donating to UNICEF or how to donate to UNICEF? Check us out on YouTube at our must have seen TV page. 
I go there every couple of days to check up to see if we have any new comments. We love new comments. Yeah. Um, generally, we will respond um, unless it's something like you guys suck. Then, you know, I'm I'll not still read it on the air if it's funny. Oh, yeah. That was great. <laughs> um, but uh, we did. Uh, you can check me out on um, Instagram. Ethan K 55. I don't know why I just that just left my head. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, you can follow me on uh, Instagram and Blue Sky and X or Twitter, Twitter at, at Brett White. You can follow my drag personality, Barb Hardly, uh, and at Barb Hardly. And Barb Hardly's Barb at Night Plex playlist experience is going to happen. I recorded the host interstitials over the weekend. Um, they were really fun. I found out some weird stuff about the episodes I chose, and I looked amazing. The blue gown I have great look great on camera very proud Gorgeous. i learn so much neat stuff about all these episodes that we do that i just have notes and notes that we never get to on the show um and soon on popheist.com i actually would like to start you know if i find a fun story while doing research that's an article you know so there will be more uh yeah. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening, for donating at the Patreon. Please keep it going, baby. And thank you to ACAST for hosting the podcast. Thanks to Dynamo for our amazing uh, art that you can now yep. see on your iPhones or your phones or your podcast app right now. Uh, and is that everything? That's about it. We'll see you in <clears throat> two weeks. For the 1960s, what is the episode we're going Oh, to we're watching That Girl, baby, because it's going to be the election and Halloween. That Girl. <laughs> Bye. See y'all next time on Must Have Seen TV. Bye.